Well, after a very long hiatus in GT Sport, like five or six months at this point, we have another new car in the game, a new Yaris. And of course, the Yaris has pretty much always been a part of Gran Turismo, not necessarily a, a top 10 car for that many people, but it has pretty much always had its own racing events, the Vitz Cup, as it's sometimes called. And there have almost always been quite a few different variations of the Yaris in there as well. GT6 was probably the best example there. There's the Euro Sport, the RS Turbo. It's a pretty good little hot hatch, even in some cases. Now, though, we have the addition of this, a vehicle which in real life is certainly one of the hottest, if not the hottest, you could comfortably say, version of the Yaris ever sold. Essentially a modern day homologation special with a wide arch kit, way more power, rally bred DNA, and its name is kind of a mouthful. It's the Toyota GR Yaris First Edition RZ High Performance 2020. The GR Yaris, let's call it for short. And of course it came alongside, in effect, the GR Supra to come to this game as well. The Supra is a good car in its own way, and although the BMW Z4 memes abound, and my opinions on the Supra compared to, for instance, the FT1 concept, I believe are already out there on the internet, on the channel, for instance. This version of the Yaris, though, to me is kind of more badass than the Supra, to be honest, because you take what is a relatively unassuming but popular hatchback, like a Corolla, for instance, or a Yaris in this case, and then you make it into this absolutely nuts, wide arch kitted, all wheel drive, 260 plus horsepower machine, which is kind of crazy. Now, what's it like in the game? First of all, let's talk specs. Now, I said in the news roundup that it was going to cost 100,000 credits. It doesn't. It costs just under 46,000. And you can thank GT Planet for getting that number completely wrong. Now, as far as the rest of the specs go, it's pretty good. It's only a 1.6 litre. As I said, it is all-wheel drive. It's relatively heavy for a smaller hatchback, just under 1,300 kilos. But it does have a healthy amount of power and an even healthier amount of torque to work with. 268 brake horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. It's at this point, though, where things go downhill a little bit. <laughs> because as you can see in the event that I'm doing here on Majore, it's a 10-minute event against 20 other cars, N300. I decided to leave the Yaris completely stock, even on the stock sports hard tyres, just turn the traction control off, put it on professional difficulty, and have the kind of race that I would typically do for one of these reviews. Well, spoiler alert, I didn't really get any higher than like 18th, because the car just really struggles on any straight section. Now one of the main reasons for that is actually the gearbox. In particular, the stock gearbox in conjunction with what I almost always use, which is an automatic setup. Yes, I know opinions are rife out there as far as automatic versus manual. I'm well aware that manuals are quicker, both most of the time in games, and even sometimes in real life as well. I'm just lazy. It really is as simple as that. I'm well aware that it's quicker with a manual, I just can't be bothered most of the time. Now, I do make some exceptions, and this is one of the vehicles which I think you would almost have to, at least if you're going to drive it stock. Because as you can see a number of times in the event, if you look down at the rev gauge, especially in third gear, it really gets stuck in that gear for some reason. The game clearly needs to change up, but for whatever reason, it just doesn't. Now, it has more than enough power and torque on paper, especially with all-wheel drive, a short wheelbase, and a wide track, to be a force to be reckoned with. It just doesn't really work out that way, though, because as you can see in the event, even though the numbers are good, and technically you'd expect it to be very good through corners as well, it just kind of isn't. The torque split makes it feel, to be honest, more like a front-wheel drive car than a rear, and you can change that to some degree, but again, I'm just referring to the way it feels stock, basically. Now, as far as tuning goes, you cannot go any higher than N300 with this car. However, you can go down. In fact, you can go down quite a bit to N100. Now, I'm yet to compare that version of the car, or even potentially an N200, and it wouldn't surprise me actually if N200 tends to be where this car is doing its best work, because yes, it's in N300, but it's barely in there. A lot of the cars that are in this event, for instance, have a lot more power. So I'm not necessarily even saying that this car couldn't be good in N300, I'm just talking about how it feels out of the box. For instance, you can do a lot to it without jumping out of N300. You can increase the power all the way as high as it can go, you can drop the weight, 
And as I said, that could change everything. In terms of lowering it, well, it wouldn't surprise me at all if N200 really is the sweet spot because you don't have to restrict the power that much. And again, you could drop that weight as well, which of course is only going to improve things because as I mentioned, for its size and for a car of its type, 1300 kilos is quite a lot. That's pretty hefty, especially for a car that's only rocking a 1.6 liter engine anyway. Ultimately, my thoughts on this particular Yaris are kind of split. In its stock form, I don't find it that impressive. In fact, it's not necessarily even a car that you need to update the game for if you're not playing GT Sport that often, because it's not going to bring some new world of adventure to the game that you were missing before. However, if you do still play GT Sport, chances are you've downloaded it already, then give it a try. Of course, the hot hatch world is relatively underrepresented within Gran Turismo Sport at the moment, and of course we'll have to see how that compares in GT7 when that's released. And as far as the tune side of things goes, well, as I mentioned in that news roundup, I most likely will do a tune of some kind for this car. Might be something like an N100 or an N200 tune, depending on if it's any good compared to my other leaderboard tunes, but most likely, if nothing else, I'll probably do something like a rally build for it, which of course is where this car should technically be in its element, given that's kind of the whole point. And to round off my thoughts about this particular vehicle in the game, I think it actually bears comparing to the real car reviews that I've done in Beards and Cars, the road test series. Comparing something like a Yaris to vehicles like Porsches and Maseratis and AMGs and various other cars that I've looked at in that series, well of course it's not necessarily going to be as quick or as powerful as many of those, but the thing that I think is important to talk about in that regard is I've mentioned even as far back as the potato camera Gran Turismo 6 days that there are certain cars in any game, not just Gran Turismo, that you simply cannot fully appreciate in a game. Because the things that make the car so good can't really be experienced virtually. The Tesla Model S was one of the original examples that I talked about. It's a car that has so much practicality in certain ways that just don't apply to a game, like space and seats <laughs> for something like a sedan to have seven seats. In a game that means nothing. Something like my car, the Touareg. In Test Drive Unlimited, it's fine. In real life, it's great. There are certain cars that just don't, for whatever reason, translate that well into a game in terms of their best points. I could see the Yaris being one of those. I think that this is the kind of car that if I did test drive one in real life and put it into the Beards and Cars playlist, I'd probably love it, because it's just that kind of car. In the game though, the handling, the torque split, the way it delivers its performance, it just doesn't feel that special. And ultimately, with the way Gran Turismo delivers the performance in vehicles, the way the physics are in the game, even the way the visuals work with kind of the lack of motion blur, and Gran Turismo's kind of known for not really having that feeling of speed transmitted that well, you know, for the sake of realism or not, you can argue either way. There are certain cars that just kind of lose a bit of their charm and excitement because of that. And I think that this Yaris is one of them. In real life, it would feel great, I have no doubt really quick, great kind of performance on like a twisty B road. In the game though, not so much. So those are my thoughts overall. Tell me down below if you've already driven it, what did you think of it? Do you think it's great? Do you think it's disappointing? It's kind of interesting to have a car this late in the game cycle either way. And of course we'll have to see what the future holds for GT Sport. Will we get more vehicles or at this point will we just wait until GT7? I think that the latter is probably more likely, but we'll have to wait and see. So tell me your thoughts down below, stick around on the channel for more, and of course check out Beards and Cars to see my real world car reviews as well. But until next time I'll see you then and for now, as always, thanks for watching.